Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast. We discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. LennonSmith.com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We have received some feedback about the excessive amount of medical terminology, such as petechiae and junk in the trunk, so I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Dr. London, I am so excited. The Olympics are right around the corner. Yeah, it, in a little bit. Yeah, like they're months away, but... It's a couple months away, but uh, I mean, Dr. London, you know... We focus so much on the doc part of the Jock Doc podcast. And I say this, I feel like I say this every once in a while, we're neglecting the jock part of the Jock Doc podcast. What I I would like to do is revisit the last Olympic sport that we tried to introduce to the games. If you remember all the way back in episode 12. Of course. And I revisited the episode just to double check. The sport that we were really advocating for um, was, we called it coin bag, and it was a sport where you put a bunch of coins on the ground, and then you had kids from the neighborhood pick them up, and they each had different uh, point allotments to them. So like a penny was two points, a nickel was three points, a quarter was zero points. Say what? Uh, But a dime was like seven points. And on and on. And then you put them in a bag and you just sort of swing the bag around for a while. Right. Yeah. It's- and that's sort of the that's sort of the end of the game because we didn't want to be like held in with the typical restrictions of an Olympic sport where it's like, this is the end of the game. This is what you're supposed to do. These are the amount of points that your team has. These kind of things that sort of build these walls that sort of force people to not actually be creative. Yeah. And like, but Dr. Uh, London, I, I was, well, I was just going to say like, what if, you know, someone comes in with like a sack of Jewia dollar or uh, a half dollar. That's discussed in the episode. I think sack of Jewia dollar or seven and a half points. I half dollar, I think was like three points, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, we were thorough. We were thorough. Yeah. This was all covered. And, uh, but what was really exciting is that for 2024, that sport was accepted into the Paris Olympics. Like in a few months, we're going to be seeing. Oh, wow. That yeah. On TV. All the coins. Okay. Like Coinback has, has finally made it to an international level. So, so, and the teams are, if I, you, you said just kids from the neighborhood. Yeah. Team red and team blue. It's yeah, it's different than some like a lot of the other sports. A lot of the teams are like USA, Canada, things like that. This is just red and blue. Um, they're kids from the neighborhood. Um, some of the kids are like kids that are friends of some of the other kids in the neighborhood, but like they're really cool and like they want to hang. So like they might not be from the neighborhood, but like they definitely spend the night at Jerry's house like enough where it's like they they're friends with a lot of the other kids in that neighborhood, even if it's not their neighborhood. And their parents know like all about their food allergies and whatever. Oh, yeah. Their kids go to school with each other and they've had dinner like once or twice. And so they're, you know, they trust them. Yeah. And they know enough like, OK, you got to carry an EpiPen like and it's like, of course, worst comes to worst. You have to do that, but like probably not. But you they've they've had to have that talk before i assume yeah i would have to think i mean he's still the kid's still alive so i would have to assume so oh okay yeah and so uh but what i was thinking dr london was okay we've already got this one sport in the olympics can we prep for 2028 yeah okay 2028 olympics are kind of special it's going to be in los angeles this is the first time it's been in the u.s in in quite a while since since 96 it's walking distance for a lot of people uh like in la i guess yes if you live down the street from it it's in walking distance absolutely and so i was thinking we could use this opportunity to like come up with a new sport for 2028 i mean i mean like with that one all all the memories are flooding back of you know coin bag like just how much we put into that 
for that whatever i'm gonna guess 10 15 minutes uh to be very thorough and to, to imagine doing it again like i don't know do you want like leaf toss uh i mean leaf toss is really good i was gonna suggest you know maybe to save us some time we all kind of play games in our day-to-day day life a little bit don't we you know what i mean just like while you're doing your normal tasks you might uh make a game out of it like oh let's see if i can do let's see if i can operate on 10 patients this hour or let's see if i can give 10 patients vaccine vaccines this hour because i mean if you've ever seen whatever those those movies or shows or something there's the guy in the park playing chess with 10 people at the same time like it's the same basic principle of like once you make that initial incision it's pretty much the same for each patient it's just you have to run pretty fast and scrub in scrub out Per, it, no, like it's, I mean, it's not that's that why hard. like you've seen uh, I'm, the, our listeners have seen on tv shows and movies there's someone in, in the operating room like sponging the surgeon's forehead to keep sweat out of their eyes it's because they're tired yeah. they're running from one room to the next to try to break a record yeah yeah which like you know hopefully we'll get operating on people into the olympics as well that's Sorry, like I know you brought in this this idea, but I'm like I I am already kind of at work on my own. Um, well, sport. no, I mean that's kind of what I where I wanted to start was like we you know we don't have to spend so much time coming up with a new sport. Let's use the games that we already use and create in our day to day lives. So, w- what is a game that at the hospital you play, just in your own mind? Yeah. Yeah, so like for general surgery, and this is this isn't anything like crazy. This is like, um, you know, uh, the, like hemorrhoid stuff. Like th- this is just, you know, a, maybe part of the intestinal tract is sticking out, and you want to go, you want to fix that up, get everything kind of tucked back away. So it's kind of the bread and butter of surgery. You do it all the time. You can line up ten of these, do them, you know, start that timer. You can get them done pretty quick. So. Um, so, I mean, is that the whole game, just speed surgery? Are there rules to it? Or is it more like the most creative surgery? Or I think you should get points points if they live, for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, if they die, I think it depends on how they die. Because, like, like once again, creative, uh, that is, like, if you do it in a really cool way, then, like, even the family's got to give it up, you know? Like that was really, really cool the way he went out. The window, what? You know, been there, done it, and uh, yeah, no, the family is not giving up anywhere near as much as I thought. Um, well, because no one's getting a medal, but, you're just doing it for no reason. If someone was getting a medal, mm-hmm, I'm sure mm-hmm. they would feel different. This is what their yeah. child trained for. Yeah. Oh, please. So, like, yeah. So I recognize that. Um. So that's that's one potential like sport idea, uh, and then I, the washing hands part before the surgery as well. That one I I sing songs and stuff. Okay. While I'm scrubbing in, um, and I imagine like how crazy would that be if I got a gold medal for doing it? Then I don't even have to do the surgery at all. So. So okay. those are my two. I, I feel like we- <laughs> my two games. We could combine these ideas, right? So, like, you're going to perform surgery without gloves. But before, you have to wash your hands. And so the person who washed their hands the best will kill the least amount of patients. Whereas the doctors with the dirtiest hands will end up infecting their patients. So, see, well... Okay, yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, some people have a genetic advantage because some people's skin is more likely to slough off. Um, like they they will lose skin cells on the patient, uh, and like sometimes you cut yourself and so you're bleeding on the patient and stuff. That's not but an advantage that, that would make them lose, probably. Yeah, well, I, I'm you just don't saying. Don't yeah, want I was going to say like patients. You, so you want to do the opposite of what you normally do. You don't want to give your patients an infection in this game. Depend depending on what like what we ended up submitting f- finalized. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we like can. That's, that's the one rules. idea. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, you're adjusting the rules right now. Like, wh- whoever, like, it doesn't matter. You do it, and then you send them off to their family. They'll deal with it. So. Uh, I'm adjusting the rules of the hospital, which is just, who cares if you wash your hands, and then you just do it as fast as possible, 10 of them lined up, and then just 
hang out. The 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 ten of them lined up isn't in the rules necessarily, but like sometimes like lunch is a common. <laughs> it, it's like an unspoken rule. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just like you're just in a hurry. You got to get a lot done. So, um, yeah, that that'd be the Olympics to me. Okay. I mean, I think this is kind of it. Do we? Do you have like a name for this game? Uh, ooh. So we call the operating room the OR. Yeah. So maybe something or, you know, like I mean, um, life or death. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fun. Life or death. And that that'll be easily that's that's good for SEO too because that's pretty original. That'll stand out. Um. Oh yeah, and people are also googling life and death all the time. Yeah. Oh please, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So I think we, we got our entry for 2028. I'm excited to see, uh, coin bag for the, um, for, for the, for everyone look out for it. Okay. Uh, look for your favorite team in Paris. Yeah. Paris. Re- A wee wee. I, I'm t- I, I'm not. What, what are you saying? So in France. Anytime they feel like they need to pee, yeah. they go wee wee. And that lets you know, like, oh, they need to find a bathroom soon. And that's what I need to do right now. You so. announce it. Okay. And later, we have some important information to convey to you. But first, um, we'd like to address a bit of listener feedback. Uh, For a long time, our listener demographic was primarily composed of uncle and aunt eaters. But in our efforts to cater to them, we found that we were neglecting the many bot accounts that download our podcast. So we are going to read off just a little bit from some of our uh, spam bot uh, listeners. So this one comes from TikTok, a bot on TikTok. Uh, This is a comment on our response to, but is gooning the new meta? At G... 100M said, quote, not that meta crying emoji, end quote. So thank you so much for this feedback, but uh, I like to say that actually, yes, we are that meta. We're, we're like so so meta, big picture, and um, we recognize that we're it with, it within a social media algorithm right now. Whoa. And yeah, I mean, what makes us really meta is, you know, like, we're not just people, but we're people inside of a computer, inside of a TikTok app, inside of a podcast, inside of the dream of a giant, inside of a sort of multi-conglomerate uh, corporation that is sort of paying us and controlling our TikToks and our podcast and, and everything. And, that, and to just take it one step back there, we are trying to kill the giant. Um, we are oh, trying to be yeah. giant slayers, uh, but we don't want to kill a corporation. We just the giant. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things. Like, it's it's a lot of the evidence is there. A lot of people talk about like simulation theory. Oh, what if we what if we live in a simulation in a computer? And that's very silly to me. It's very clear that we live in the dream of a giant, and that if we want to destroy the giant, that should be pretty easy because dreams are real. And if a dream convinces you to kill yourself, you should do it. And this is something that we have been pushing a lot just into the public sphere so that the giant will hear about it, realize it's okay for me to eliminate myself. Yeah, and sorry, to clarify there, this isn't a tip for the listeners. This is a tip for the giant, okay? Yeah, or I mean, just sort of explaining what we're doing to the giant to the listeners. I would say... If you're a listener and you can, I mean, if you're a listener to this, you are also in the giant stream because that's the level that we're currently on. So I would say do what you can to encourage the giant to commit suicide. Um, Maybe just stomp on the ground a lot because that would be part of the giant's brain is the ground. And maybe that'll give him a headache. I I don't know. We're out of ideas at this point. Yeah. Yeah. so, uh, I hope that was. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much for that feedback. And now for today's medical topic: rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is caused by trauma, prolonged immobility, snake bites, seizures, and crushing injuries. 
It's basically the smashing and releasing of muscle cells into the bloodstream. Uh, other etiologies include cocaine, which restricts vessels, low potassium, which also restricts vessels, low phosphate, which breaks cells, uh, statins, that's a prescription medication, and viral infections. These can all lead to rhabdomyolysis. Um, in rhabdomyolysis, uh, creatine phosphatase levels, uh, sorry, creatine phosphokinase levels are markedly elevated, and myoglobin spills into the urine. And since 95% of potassium in the body is intracellular, it's inside the cells, uh, when those cells are damaged, it causes hyperkalemia or excess potassium because that potassium goes into the bloodstream. Uh, hyperuricemia occurs for the same reason it does in tumor lysis syndrome, which is that cells break down and nucleic acids are released from the cell's nuclei. And those are rapidly metabolized into uric acid and then damaged muscle. And this is separate. This is separate from the uh, potassium overdose that I had, right? When I pushed a lot of those bananas up my nose. Yeah, I, I feel like for, for you, the overdose was more like trying to go over your mouth, right? That was the idea. You said, I'm going to overdose. Well, yeah, because you, you go through the nose over the mouth sort of like the lady who can shoot uh, milk out of her eye by snorting it or whatever yeah and then you got mad and then I overdosed on it or I passed out or whatever yeah well like I just feel like the term overdose is what you hung up on because you're like well it goes over the mouth so it's, it's an overdose yeah so uh, damaged muscle releases phosphate uh, hypercalcemia occurs from increased calcium binding to damaged muscle. Uh, the best initial test for rhabdomyolysis is urinalysis, which will only be positive on dipstick for large amounts of blood, but no cells will be seen on microscopic examination. The most specific diagnostic test for rhabdomyolysis is a urine test for myoglobin. Uh, this is because the urine dipstick cannot tell the difference between the hemoglobin, myoglobin, and red blood cells. Uh, treat rhabdomyolysis with saline hydration and mannitol as an osmotic diuretic. Myoglobin is a severe oxidant stress on the tubular cells, so the saline and mannitol increase the flow rates of that urine, which decreases the contact time between the myoglobin and the tubular cells. Agreed. All right, well, Cameron, we, we do have obviously some important information to convey today. Uh, and like, we can try to tiptoe around it, but I think we all kind of feel it today, <laughs> if you know what I mean. This is this is something that, yeah, it might be a little controversial because um, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to experience stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we do have to speak our mind because otherwise it's just going to be hang the, at the atmosphere is going to be hanging over the whole episode if we don't address it. Yeah. But um, yesterday was a special day. Yeah. Do you, what was it, Doctor London? Do you? Uh... Well, let me let me count it out for you. There's Uno de Mayo. There's Dos de Mayo. There's Trace de Mayo. There's Quattro de Mayo. And then, and this was by my count at least. Yesterday we actually struck upon Cinco de Mayo. Um, yeah, and which, uh, and I. I didn't know the cultural significance before we got it going, but now, I mean, wow. Like, did, let me just say first, I learned a lot. I learned a lot yesterday um, at, about cultures that were, are very different from my own. Um, there are things, and I don't want to spoil anything for what we're going to get into, but like there was a, a, a panada, panada, um that you and the and the the tradition the s sport in this other culture is to uh, physically abuse a panada until it's uh it's intestine i guess what's meant to be its intestines are you know ripped open and falling out um yeah and this, I wasn't at this one. This was the first party of the day for you. It was a children's party. Because typically you're not going to see a panada at, you know, like a normal party or a group of adults. It's usually going to be. Well, yeah, it's neighborhood you know, like kids. Five and six year. Yeah, five and six year olds kind of. Yeah. 
but the your friends i guess i should say your friends yeah just like age is just a number um i guess is one point to, to make here uh no i mean that is what your shirt said i saw the pictures at the party um yeah and uh and I, I'll, yep. I'll say like and even they they tried to make me wear a blindfold but i told them like well i can't aim very well well sorry they, first they they said blindfold and then i hit so many children in my attempts to hit that banana that eventually they said okay never mind just uh and I, but then i was like well i i could do it with the blindfold just give me a, give me a few more swings but um like just the amount of of uh misses that i had which yeah no they were misses they were misses but uh there were enough of them that um yeah that i i went without a blindfold and it was way easier to hit the panetta and i i don't want to brag here dr london and it, look it's been a while it's been a few months since i've been at a child's birthday party but when i've hit a panada i don't even need the blindfold oh like, like i don't even need it at all you can tackle can do it? it without it yeah do you do you use the knife or the bat uh no, I use my brute force. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Uh and my mind. D- uh, is that like d- like you play chess with it? Uh metaphorically, I guess I'm playing chess in my mind to make the decision to obliterate the pinata with a with a bat no with my brute force okay yes okay okay uh right and so i'm sorry we are kind of skirting around it but we are talking yeah, let's get back to it we are talking about cinco de mayo and we're talking about parties dr parties. london and i dr london and i held a rager last night yes. we held a hell of a party yeah the mayor was there mm-hmm. uh his two friends was there his friends were there. His mom was there. Her and her um, book club. The whole group made it. Um, her book club made it. Except Some for, were a couple late. Yeah. But they called and told us, "Hey, we're going to be a few minutes late." And that was awesome. We asked them to bring the ice, and they said, "No, no, we yeah, won't." We do didn't that. have any ice. Uh, let's see who John Stamos was there. Yeah, but he honestly, he was kind of a drag. He um. Uh, and he and I kind of have a, a feud going, but um, basically he's he we both have the same tradition of we'll walk in when the party's kind of going and there are a lot of people there, and he and I separately we'll both say this, but it kind of just depends who gets to it first. I'll say now this is a full house. Oh wow, yeah, and then he'll do the and same. No one, yeah, and no one has any idea what you're talking about. Well, they have, they have a, they're like, yeah, I guess it is pretty full in here. Uh, or people are like, oh, is someone playing poke? Like, is this a pun on a poker game that's going on that I don't see? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Stamos and I have, have a lot of beef for this reason. And so then he comes in a few minutes later, says it, everyone understands the joke and laughs at his thing. And you get really sort of pissed off. And then, I, and then he becomes the pinata. I leave for a while. Um, and I try to get like two or three more people to show up because then I want to walk back in and say, now this is a fuller house. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, but I, I could not get the other people to show up. I was going to say, so. have you ever been able to do that? Because the idea of you leaving and then uh, uh, coming back with additional people sounds kind of far-fetched. That you'd be able to find someone willing to go with you anywhere just to get in the car with you, actually. Yeah, no, I tried to pay some people, but no, they were like, money is not the reason. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so Stamos was there. Um, we had uh, Kathy. She's, uh, she's a pie maker from across town. Um, now, it's the bad side of town, which we don't like to say bad side of town, but Kathy is bad. So her side of town, obviously, is the bad side of town. Um, so she brought her butterscotch pie. Bad has a lot of connotations. I do want to say she doesn't like, she doesn't hurt people or whatever. She just sucks. Yeah. Oh, boring. She'll talk so much about crochet and like, hey, everyone loves crochet. I'm not dissing that. But like, she'll talk about it in terms of like the theory and the history 
in a way that sounds very uh, privileged. Pretty posh. Very privileged. And the way she even talks about like, oh, my sister's been in and out of the hospital a lot lately. You know, maybe it's like, oh, okay, wow. You can afford just going to and leaving the hospital. You don't get trapped in the hospital with them sort of holding you prisoner until you pay your bill. Yeah. You don't get lost or stuck. Uh, and then she'll say like, yeah, she'll, she'll say like, I, I had a, a meeting at, um, you know, there was no intervention for me because I was drinking too much. And like, now I'm really trying to make a healthy change in my life. And uh, she'll blather on and on about Stamos too, honestly, on that front. And I'm just like, guys, this is called jungle juice. Drink it. You know, <laughs> like just do Cinco de Mayo properly. No, we don't have any margaritas. It's called jungle juice. It's just Everclear and some whatever juices we could find. Um, enjoy it you know <laughs> so yeah i mean i guess so we can start off uh, this episode if we didn't say it before maybe we did i don't remember but we're going to be giving party tips just in general just to throw the biggest party you can imagine and so i'd say for the first two tips one don't let john stamos know the address of the party because it completely ruins your full house joke um and then two force people to drink your sort of mystery juice yeah and I guess three, um, generally, now we, we are saying party tips in general, but we do advise planning your party, whichever kind it is, Christmas, uh, Halloween, you want to plan it for Cinco de Mayo time. Like, ideally, this time of year is like, the weather's nicer, usually. Um, that And that is one of the most annoying things, is like people throw a halloween party at the end yeah. of october when things are so getting cold. cold and yeah. it's like oh hey i mean we can do that I, i'm not one yeah. to complain well but you know what would be I, a great time to do this is like you know the first week of may yeah because i'm wearing the skimpiest outfit you know oh yeah you know you're I'm going gonna... as slutty dr london it's the slutty yeah. sort of the slutty version of dr london yeah, and you're if you're trying to imagine it and you're struggling, I every year I have the same struggle. So, well, and your your outfit is struggling to not break because it's so tight. Yeah, yeah, and that is because, at least in part, because of the weight gain. Because I'm so nervous and I overeat because I know the party's coming up, um, and it's harsh. But I hey, I'll tell you what I don't do at the party. Talk about that, <laughs> you know. Uh, what I do at the party is I say, like, costume contest. It's Cinco de Mayo. Um, and I do repeat that it's Cinco de Mayo a lot because I feel like some people forget because of the themes that we have for it. Because, um, of course, yeah, costume party, uh, 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 gun, um, uh, dismantling a gun party, uh, just learning how to do that blindfolded. Um, I mean, all I, I think... A point we don't want to skip over is that every party you should throw should be a costume party. Whether it's Halloween, Cinco de Mayo, uh, would you say a gun uh, cleaning party? A gun dismantling party. So everyone should be in a costume, preferably a mascot style costume, um, a furry style costume. Something that ensures that no one at the party knows who you are. That adds an error of mystery that is really important. Well, and also so that if the party goes kind of crazy and you find yourself, you know, you wake up the next day somewhere in the woods, you will seem like a larger animal. Um, because that's sort of what Cameron and I went through today is we woke up in various parts of the, the, the woods and we had to find our way back. And it really, really helped that my sexy doctor costume was uh, the mascot style. Um, like, very furry, uh, very big. I, you know, I had this giant head on my head, you know, like a helmet. Right, you were, you were wearing, uh, yeah, I guess maybe we didn't clarify. The sexy Dr. London costume wasn't like just you wearing a bikini. It was a, it was a mascot. It was, you were wearing a suit of yourself. Yeah, yeah, which, as I said... Dressed up gained, like a huge slut. Which is bursting at the seams because of the weight gain, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I woke up like that, and I tell you, if I had... Now, I didn't run into any animals, but, like, if I had, 
I would have been able to look like so much bigger than I normally do to scare them. So that's why that's why you dress up costume party style. Because what if the next day you woke up and there was a, a mountain lion? You know. Well, and that's the thing. I mean that that was one of the reasons that like I dressed up as a dead mountain lion. That was sort of my costume. And that way, if I came across another mountain lion, they would be like, oh, I don't have to mess with this guy. He's already dead. Even though I'm walking around, I'm talking, I'm on my cell phone. Um, I'm probably playing games on my phone if I'm not on the cell phone. Um, but the, it, as far as I know, mountain lions have no idea if my phone has games on it or not. They don't know what I'm doing on there. Mm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I like I, I'm just not like I. I haven't studied mountain lions to the extent that I probably should have <laughs> for for the party. Uh, what do you learn in medical school? What like if not that? Yeah, but mountain lion lore. Well, um, honest, I I was thinking it should have come up with my research for Cinco de Mayo, uh, because and, and once again, this is general party advice, but you should plan it for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but yeah, I, I do look up animal facts. Um, one of them was mountain lion lore and just like what they're into. Uh, especially like if you can tame one, which I know you can never really tame a wild beast, but like, I, I kind of read it just in case they can do, I want to see if they pull the tricks on me. You know, like if I were in a mountain lion and I found out that say like, you can say, shh, shh, do it to calm it down. I'm going to be looking out for someone doing that to me. So, so if that's helpful, that's pretty helpful. Um, I would say the next thing at your Cinco de Mayo party or any party in general, we got to talk about food. Now, at the party we had last night, we had you know Cinco de Mayo is sort of the celebration of uh you know Latin culture and all these different things. So we, of course, the food that we had were was Campbell's chunky baked potato bacon and cheddar soup. Yes. Uh, not cooked yet, but that was no. part of the fun. Um, the part of the fun was getting all of the people there at the party and then having them cook us dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we went over Cameron and I both, uh, we have sort of a separate party room where there are, uh, some beds or futons and we went ahead and took some naps while they went to cook. Uh, and I found that that was a really fun part of the process because. At a given party, someone there's gonna like kind of feel like cooking, like or or if you cook badly enough, they'll want to intervene and do it better. So, yeah. So it's easy to just skip that step of cooking badly first to convince someone to cook better, and just you just hand you know you just hand some oven mitts to the uh, your friends who walk in, and you can say something like, "Hey, I gotta run an errand real quick. Will you watch this and cook it if I'm not back in time?" and uh, you say you phrase it as a question, but you are already walking away. And I don't even get, do that. I just say, "Oh, it's not working. I'm trying so hard, and it's not working." And then eventually, someone is like, "Okay, I'll, I'll do it. I guess if it gets you to stop talking." And then I go and take a nap with Doctor London. And we say, "With we have a bunk room. Okay, it's a lot of bunk beds and futon style bunk beds, and uh." We, we take a nap, see, and sometimes we put on music. Uh, oh, so, so that brings us to party music, okay? Oh, yeah. party music, yes. So your party music for the nap room, you want to have some, some uh, soft lullabies, okay? Uh, maybe some just ocean sounds, okay? There's those, there's those albums on Spotify where it's like lullaby instrumental versions of popular songs. And so I would say, like, the lullaby version of that song that goes, day bow 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 day bow bow is uh, sort of an essential party song, I would say, especially in the nap room. For the nap room, yeah. Well, yeah, no, that is a good um, point. Any room can have it, but I'd say the nap room is well, where it's going to shine. I was going to say, generally speaking, I, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when DJing is they play the music they want to hear. But no, you need to play the music that the most people in the room are going to recognize and enjoy. And so the the best way, because 
some people listen to country, some people listen to hip hop, some people listen to rock. Every single person in that room knows wheels on the bus go round and round. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. No matter the age, no matter ethnicity or what part of the world they come from or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider. These are universally known and beloved songs. And uh, and so you'll have, yeah, that's for the main main party room. I want to have because like those are kind of exciting songs. And you don't want to disturb your sleep um, with a nap room. Yes, well, especially once you you definitely want to like um, you know tr- the the order of the track list on your playlist is very very important. And by the time you get to there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Your party, I mean, I'm going to be honest, people are going to be, like, screwing in the back. Like, people are going to be, like, breaking things. Like, it's going to go insane. Well, it's a rager. It is a rager. Um, and that, I guess that brings us to the next part, which is how fast to call the cops on your own party. Um, I, first two minutes, usually, I think is whenever I call them, to complain about the noise of complaint that I know will come. Uh, because if you're the first to call yourself out, for being too loud, you're going to get to enjoy your nap time. Like, once the cops come over, make everyone leave, you just get to keep sleeping. So, um, and ideally, the, the guests will have time to finish making the food, and then they'll leave, and then you wake up from your nap a few hours later, and you get to eat your food. Yeah, and then, I mean, <laughs> prepare for the next party to begin. It doesn't end with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's whenever you go, um, well, okay. I guess we should say here, um, uh, there will be an interruption to your party. There always is. This always happens. You will have springtime carolers come along and these are the people who, yeah, you forgot. They, they forgot to do it around like Christmas time. So to deal with them, uh, once again, you will call. And so, so law enforcement does have some kind of a, it can have sort of a shady thing. Like they can get people in trouble. That you don't really want to get in trouble, but like sometimes the situation just calls for it. You, you have to call law enforcement. These carolers need to be returned to their homes. Um, and, and they need to learn more songs. Cause like all they do is like one type of song. Like it's just Christmas songs. Well, and uh, there's something, I mean, one thing to keep in mind is that legally, uh, when a caroler comes to your house, they are your legal responsibility until they go to the next house. So if they're the last house that they went to before trouble happened or CPS comes and ships them away or whatever, you're being held responsible. Uh, which is why, so so normally I say, the, the call law enforcement, you want to do that ahead of time so that they're already there to stop them. Um, but the the occasion could come up that you have to get rid of some caroler bodies. And so that's the next part of the party. That's when the party really gets going. Yeah, so the party really doesn't start until the first person dies um, and is buried. Um, Now, this sort of becomes tricky because you don't want to just start digging up outside because your neighbors are going to... There's so many bodies there already, and your neighbors are starting to question, like, why are there so many just, like, you know, bumps in the in this guy's backyard. And so you want to start burying in the house, like in your house. Just start grab a shovel and start digging. Yeah. Now there's this guy who was um he's been canceled. Uh like this really, really, really funny, like this clown guy named John Wayne Gacy. And he actually had a similar plan and like it really worked for a long time. So I think like he's not not the worst person to take some tips from on this. So uh his example at least was that you do you start a construction company and then you do uh projects in your house that will make it less now if you live alone and you don't get guests very often which is my case um then no one's going to be asking about the big piles of dirt in your house but but if you are someone who likes to entertain guests on a regular you know frequency then you might have to start a construction company and do construction work to explain the fact that you are doing so much construction in your house. Uh, And uh, I mean, you do run the risk though of uh, like, you know, 
uh, JWG of getting canceled because just the, the, the culture these days is so sensitive. They, they hate construction guys. They do. It's the wokeism. Yeah. The wokeism. It's because construction guys, they cat call so much. And so people are like, Oh, they're barely even people. And so people like John Wayne Gacy get a bad rap. And it's like, Oh, sorry. This guy who, uh, let's see in his free time, he entertains children. Yeah. And then professionally Puts on to do it. Yeah. Professionally, he builds things. Yeah. But we've canceled him and yeah. Uh, when we can't we can't say he's he's good now and we have to like pretend he doesn't even exist. Like, oh, are we gonna just erase history? <laughs> like Oh right. Yeah, it's like when people talk about Michael Jackson, it's like, okay, so I'm not supposed to listen to thriller anymore. I'm kinda like, okay, so I'm not supposed to enjoy some of like John Wayne Gacy's clown tricks. Like his clowning. Yeah. He was really good at clown. And like, and like clowning is a skill, by the way. You don't just know that overnight. Like he's No, it takes, I mean, two, three days to figure it out. Yeah. As far as I'm like, I never, you know, bothered. But like John Wayne. No, Gaze, and I hate clowns. Yeah. Can't but yeah. But so I guess I guess all that to say, like, um it, when you hide the bodies, uh just make sure that you have a job that explains how you hide them. Yeah. Whether it's clown, construction, uh, 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 surfer, wh- whatever. And I think that's most of the tips for a party. Anyway, so those are party tips. Uh, you can apply to any holiday, but especially Cinco de Mayo, or at least, sorry, any holiday that you plan to celebrate on Cinco de Mayo. Yes, uh, if you were to try any of these tips on a day that is not May 5th, um... <laughs> No, you, I, you know what? I'll just leave you to do it. I'll yeah, just I, leave you to do it, listener. I would love to see it. you pull that off. Try yeah. it. Yeah, no, sure. Just whatever. Like, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So, so I think that's it. But thank you so much to um, our producer Cameron. Thank you to Did You Know the House? 